Our next, uh, our next presenter is uh, Hun Suk Kang, from, um, uh, retired from Shell. She's now an industry consultant, and she has a lot of experience in this uh, topic of, of uh, projects. So uh, I'd like to introduce her. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here to talk to you about brownfield projects. Um, they're, not, they're not really sexy or anything like that. You know, uh, the, the, all the plants are out there. They're running really well. They're very hard to scope because the projects are, you know, the plants are running well. Operation just does an amazing job keeping up with all the maintenance. I know in one of the projects that uh, we were trying to scope, uh, they were machining parts. They were getting things off of, off of uh, like Craigslist and things like that to get parts. Um, it, everything had been, you know, out, out of end of life for a very long time. But yet, yet the plants were running beautifully. So it was very difficult to go through and decide what the scope needs to be and what the funding and how to get funding for these things, because everyone agreed that it needed to be done. But the main thing was, um, was how to make it transparent. It's just like these bridge projects, right? Everyone knows the bridges are, are crumbling, but nobody wants to really, uh, you know, nobody knows how many bridges, how we fix the bridges, all these types of things. And that's what we found with these brownfield projects. Sa same type of scenario. So the main thing, really, in the beginning, is really about, um, you know, what parts do you modernize, which, which parts do you maintain? And as we got first started on it, we found that we had to make sure that we had the right people involved. Um, otherwise, the decisions kept cycling. You know, we kept, it's like, oh, well, who, who was in the meeting? And, 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 you know, were all the right people there? So it's really about making sure that you've got the business involved, you have projects, and you have the plant. And, and, and you know who, who's accountable and, and uh, who's the decision maker. And each piece, then, is also about uh, what is the cost of maintaining the old system? You have to really think about this because it's all in, in lots of different pieces. And so you have to really dig out these numbers. What is the cost and, and what is the, the total cost of ownership at this point? How many more years can the existing system really last? And so, so uh, we'll, we'll go through that a bit. And then what is the capability and the productivity uh, of the old system? Can this be improved? So uh, it's all about throughput. Right, so, so we have to look at that and, and see what the old system can do and what is possible with a new system. And is it really safe to operate? Um, some systems are getting very old and you have to look at all the infrastructure to, to see where you are in terms of risk and you have to assess the risk. Then uh, how much will it cost to migrate? So it depends on, on what type of scenario that we have, what type of scope we have. And, uh, and what are the benefits and the value added system. So, so, so not only looking backwards at what you have, but then you have to look forward. Uh, what could we have? And, and what are the possibilities here? Uh, and what's the downtime? So nobody likes an operating plant that has downtime, right? So, so you're losing money. And so you have to th look at all the different op uh, options and you have to look at that right up front. And you have to look at the total life cycle. So you have to think about what, what do we have what could we have? And then what is the life cycle for what you're going to be installing and making sure that you have all these plans in place? And then uh, and what do the regulations look like for, for operators in the future? Okay, so, so you have to look at that. So the, what we ended up with really was that there are really three main drivers for modernization projects. You have the obsolescence piece. That's the most uh, obvious piece. What's obsolete? But then we had to look at, uh, first we were thinking it was just going to be shut down, you know, like DCS systems. So, so that's simple, right? But then as we got looking at it, we're like, oh my gosh, we have shutdown systems. We have operator stations. And then we start looking at all the field instruments and, and, and the wiring. You know, um, it, have we had cable tray covers on it? Did anyone pay attention? You know, <laughs> you know it, how, how how about all the different pieces of the infrastructure that you have? And so as we start looking at that, the, you have to look at the whole driver piece. The second driver is really about regulations, industry regulations and compliance. So we have to look at the new CIS regulations that are uh, evolving, right? And then the operation uh, excellence piece of it. 
So we do have the risk of the aging workforce. You've seen a lot of presentations on that. Um, and so how do we mitigate that? Because we can do that through our, through our control systems. And then uh, you look at APC piece. Now that piece is really good for helping fund these projects. Okay, so you have to look at that piece. It's not typically looked at, but, but it takes only a little bit of amount of money. And most APCs applications, they pay off somewhere between two, two weeks and six months. Okay? So you have to look at these pieces, and, and then it helps with the funding. Then, you, you, then, of course, you have to look at the cyber security piece. Everybody wants to look at everything on their iPads, computers. You know, how do you do that, and how do you do this long term? The obsolescence piece, um, you know, it's really about how long your plant um, is in, in terms of the life cycle. And you have to look at every component again, okay? So, so you look at the different component life cycles, and you have to take it component by component. Then we look at the CIS regulations, and uh, you have to look at the regulations. Um, you know, they are becoming more stringent. You know, there still is some grandfathering um, that, that's being allowed so that you don't have to separate the, the shutdown systems from, from, the, from the basic control system, but they are evolving so that one day it will require that, and some, some countries are requiring that now. Um, and then you've got the environmental compliance monitoring piece, and then the operational safety piece. You really have to consider how a possible accident could, could really affect the company in the future. So look at it in terms of workforce safety. We want everybody to go home safe all the time, right? And then you look at the equipment damage, and you also look at loss of reputation. Okay? That, that, that loss of reputation is also very important for future projects and future things you do anywhere really around the world. The, the world is, very, is a very global place now, and so things that happen, let's say uh, for Shell, like in Nigeria, uh, it affects things in Alaska. So, so you have to look at that piece too. This is the um, average dollar loss. So as you're looking at these reinstrumentation projects, you have to pull up the data on what sort of incidents you've had and, and actually calculate what sort of losses so, so that it, you can look at it and say, look, if we can mitigate some of this, this is what, this is what we can do. The, the challenges, again, for operational excellence, that's one of the big key drivers, right? It's about the risk of the aging workforce. We are losing a lot of, a lot of knowledge and we're losing operators, we're losing engineers, we're losing, you know, uh, all sorts of folks in, in the, over the next 10 years. We've lo already lost a lot, there's still a lot more coming. And then the APC piece, you're looking at uh, throughput increase somewhere between four to 10% on average, okay? So, so, so you, can, you can calculate that piece in and, and it'll help you. Uh, the cybersecurity piece. So as we look at the aging workforce, th this again, um, you know, you, you see all those little people there, you know, they, uh, everyone's getting a lot older very quickly. And there's a big knowledge gap. Um, the, uh, typically, you know, you have costs for the basic control piece, and, and that's generally the, the biggest piece of it. The APC is, is generally very small, okay, to, to actually uh, fund. And then uh, the cybersecurity. You have to think in terms of, you can't just, uh, the, you know, as Dick was talking about before, you can't just walk in and uh, do your piece and then say, say, well, we're good, right? You have to look at it in terms of the whole life cycle because all these different platforms are, are becoming obsolete very quickly and you have different malware um, and uh, different ways of uh, cyber attacks. So then, then we got to really the six basic steps for reinstrumentation projects. Uh, first, we, we took a look at it, and then we, uh, we decided on what the preliminary scope should be. That, then we drew out a big systems architecture drawing, and it wasn't the typical piece where you, where you see the DCS and then, and then everything above it. We actually included all the, the, the field instruments, rack rooms, and we did it by, um, by really physical you know, areas and, and we put little dotted boxes around it and became kind of an evergreen document. And we would highlight things and say, okay, we've covered this piece, we have, we've covered that piece. And, and as we did that, the scope, uh, the scope just became much more, much and much more clear. Then we got the MAC involved in it 
and uh, and then the Mac uh, conducted a field survey, started looking at things in a lot more detail than we did. We looked at it in chunks, right? And, and then uh, then we produced an overall systems architecture, and then and then we had the scope. And as we were doing this, the piece that you have to keep in, in mind always is, is how are we going to cut this thing over, right? How are we going to do this? How are we going to implement this? So this is really about the field survey of, of, of making sure that you're looking at all of it, all, the entire control systems from the field all the way up, and all your infrastructure, because you, know, you don't want to uh, get to be uh, putting things in. You're like, oh my gosh, the UPS system isn't size big enough. What about our grounding grid? Things like that. Um, you know, are, are the valves going to hold? You know, are these bypasses even working? Right. So you have to be looking at all this up front so you can plan for it so you don't have any uh, shutdowns. We actually had in our risk matrix that we were probably going to have uh, one to two shutdowns, and we didn't have any. So, so that was actually really good because uh, we had like 50 to 60,000 IO. So to have no shutdowns was excellent. We didn't have any trips. The other piece in here that, um, that should be looking at is really about third-party systems. Okay? And so, so uh, look, look at all those packages you have out there, and you, and you can't forget about those. Can't forget about those because a lot of those are also at the end of life, and there's a lot of risk in those failing. So then, uh, then we got into the, uh, the uh, this little, you know, backwards S, I guess, uh, is really a trail of of how you then start thinking in terms of project execution. So you have to think about that piece of it also as you're doing. Um, then you start looking at system architecture and look at all the different pieces and how you're going to do it in the most cost-effective way and still meet your overall uh, the drivers and premises, right? You want to know what the, what the formula is for success, and you want to make sure that you stay on that. This is what success looks like, and this is what we need to do in order to get there. Then you really get into, you're back to really overall identifying that project scope, okay? So, so, so then you, we've looked at the hard I.O., now you have to look at soft I.O. You have to think about what pieces can we actually reuse? You look at system security, you look at APC, and then you look at the operator effectiveness piece. We have to make sure that we identify all these big pieces and we lay them all out. And then we do a, uh, this is the, the bathtub curve that I think everyone's seeing. And so you take the different components and you, and you figure out where you are in that bathtub curve and where your risks are, and you, and you quantify those, okay? And then this, this again is about uh, the biggest risk out there right now seems to be about cybersecurity, making sure that you have a good plan for the future and that it is a life cycle plan. And, and making sure that, that you're, you're capturing all the, the pluses for the future that you can put in there, okay? What you want at the end is, is a better running plant. It's not just replacing kind for kind. You want a, uh, a well running plant at the end of the day. And you want to give back more than what you, what you started with, all right? Because if you think about it, most plants run really well. And so, so if you're just going to tell them that they're going to get the same thing as they, as they have now, um, they aren't going to approve it. <laughs> you know, so you have to look a little bit further. And, um, and then for the operator effectiveness piece, we ended up looking at it going, OK, how are they going to actually run with with, uh, with this, and, and, and are we going to have the same operators operating the same units, and what does that unit look like, and how many do we need? And so, so we looked at the control room design aspect of it. We looked at the alarm management piece. Um, we looked at the HMIs, right, simplifying them the most possible. Of course, the MPA and the operator training piece. We ended up with uh, full dynamic simulators. Uh, and training them and, and making sure that that the the uh, that as we we went through all the commissioning and cutovers that it went through very well and and we didn't have any trips later. So 
A well-designed control room does have, uh, you, you want to think about what you want in the future, right? This is a big chance. So you have to think about what synergy and flow you want. Who do you want talking to whom? So that's the type of thing we did. We did end up actually decreasing the number of operators we needed. Um, each one had a greater breadth of control, so, so that, that was another piece. Um, the AP, uh, the, the modular procedural automation, uh, getting some of that knowledge, this is about knowledge transfer again, and, but automating it. So, so that, that was, uh, that's a wonderful piece to put in there. It, it helps mitigate some of the risk of the aging workforce. Whoops. And then, of course, all the benefits of an operator training, uh, training system. You know, we, we, we debated many times about is it really needed? You know, they're going to be working with it anyway. They're going to be doing the graphics. You know, is it really needed? And, and, uh, and we, were, we did do it, and it was very, very beneficial. We were able to uh, play with new, new uh, control schemes and, and, and do some, uh, uh, make the plant run a lot better at the end of the day. Um, and and we, we were able to do that, uh, playing with them before we implemented them. And then uh, the, the HMI, you know, uh, everybody knows about these things, but um, it, it, it's really about, um, about making sure that, that it's the most effective it can be, right? And alarm management, um, you know, if you have so many alarms going on right right now or you know in the future, what what can you do to minimize those? Uh, we we had a big uh, problem once with one of our our plants during during a turnaround. When they came back up, uh, there were too many alarms going off, and so we had a hard time starting back up. And then uh, then you know as you're looking at the DCS and the Cisscope. Of course, you're looking at what are we really going to do with it, right? And so you can do, do anything from replacing to migrating to upgrading. So, so each piece takes a lot of thought, takes a lot, a lot of time, a lot of thinking, a lot, a lot of risk ranking. You know, what are you getting? What are you giving up? How much is it going to cost? And so, then, so we went through all the different upgrade scenarios to, to figure all that out, and, and we went through it. And so, um, and, and that included the field instrument piece. Because uh, around certain pieces of equipment, if, if, even if they're not obsolete, you have to think about what, what can I do? What can I get more back? This, uh, this, this is especially effective for upstream. When, when you're looking at things that are offshore, you want to get a lot of information back so that, so that you can plan all these, the, the, uh, the maintenance offshore. It's very expensive to do. You know, you have a lot of problems with, uh, with POVs, so you want to make sure that, that it's well planned, that you chunk them together. So, that's it.